A couple months ago, I made a video about the reality show Bar Rescue, where we met the sultry bag of dad breath known as John Taffer, the expert bar consultant that traveled the country reviving failing bars. Admittedly, I've slowly started watching this show outside of researching for videos because it's just unironically entertaining. I'll say it, I'm Taffer-pilled. I can't get enough. He may be terrifying, but I could only wish my girlfriend looked at me the way John looks at a delicious lobster meal, like he's perpetually releasing a lengthy protein fart. This very controversial episode of Bar Rescue takes place at Pirate's Tavern, a pirate-themed restaurant and bar started by Tracy Rebello. How can I describe Tracy? I'm trying to find a more elegant way to say PIRATE FETISH! The great thing about Bar Rescue is that every episode of this show is like the most dramatic spectacle consisting of some of the weirdest people you'll ever see. They call me one-eyed Mike because, well, there really only is one eye in Mike. You may be looking at Mike and thinking, oh, he seems fun. What a character. No, this is not a character. Mike lives his entire life in this pirate persona and it's both hilarious and alarming but we'll get to him later. I'm $900,000 in debt. I lost my house. My credit was shot. Now let's find out if John can contort his face and dramatically throw enough food around to save this restaurant from being shut down. That's your future broken! John and his wife Nicole park outside the bar to prepare a recon mission. But first he reads Yelp reviews that he physically printed out in true Alex Jones fashion. And it wouldn't be an episode of Bar Rescue without another weird horrifying shot of John in dramatic lighting. Hidden cameras have been placed around the bar to capture Nicole's recon. They do this in every episode where they mount these gigantic rotating security cameras in the most obvious places as if nobody who's in the kitchen doing something sketchy is gonna see them. Hey Jerry, you know what'll uh, go good with that guy? Sandwich? Um, I'm already way ahead of you. Poop sauce! 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 There's nothing else I can do to help facilitate your name. I think these people know who I am. I've been made, so I just got up and walked out. Yeah, I don't think they recognized you, Nicole. I think that they were just being polite and offering good service. So like, I, I, what do you want? This guy can't recommend you the nachos without you being all like, oh my God, I'm too famous. They all know who I am. I knew Nicole would stick out like a sore thumb in this place, but I have a backup plan. Bill and Jen Rodenheiser owe me a favor. John calls upon two bar owners he helped in a previous episode and has them dress up as pirates before going inside to do recon. Just gonna see it yourselves whatever the you like, are you know? It was, it was odd. They finally get their food and drinks, but they taste so horrible that the owner, Tracy, comps a majority of the meal. Honestly, I don't know what's worse, uh, eating old frozen fish or being the cameraman who's outside alone with John in his thoughts while he waits for them to return. Uh, how do you think it's going in there, Mr. Taffer? Ch uh, uh, ch should I cut, or? Did I tell you to cut? Cut. Bill and Jen return to report the bad dining experience before John finally goes inside to have a chat with the owner. Have you always wanted to open a pirate bar? It's sort of the ultimate adult fantasy. Uh, dangerous and sexy. Okay, well, can we just let the, the fucking man eat his mac and cheese in peace? That's so fucking uncalled for. Also, I had no idea that there were people out there that were like this infatuated with pirates. I assume she's imagining a charismatic Jack Sparrow type and not the more historically accurate kind with a 10 foot wide stink radius. Also, no, he didn't lose his leg in a cool pirate battle, Tracy. He has diabetes. I have not drawn a salary for six years. How are you surviving? I live with my parents in the basement of their house with my husband and my 17 year old daughter. Because because Tracy's too delusional to admit that she's running her restaurant into the ground, John gives her a good old-fashioned shaming. What makes you ashamed? Tracy's husband, Juiciano, overhears this and gets into a shouting match with John, unaware that he is the undisputed king of loud noises. The food is good. Uh, Your food is the worst I've ever seen. It stinks. I don't think so. How dare you put hard work in my had to. Dude, the food's great, okay? I, I, I even washed my hands. Do you not do that normally? I guess that would make it a more authentic pirate experience. What, you didn't think Jack Sparrow had duty on his fingers literally all the time? Regardless, John gathers all the employees to confront them all together, and it gets pretty heated. You think it's funny that she's in debt $900,000? No, it's not funny at all. That's good to hear. There is a grown man yelling at the top of his lungs at people who aren't children. You're dressed like a six-year-old child. I wouldn't talk about that. Yeah, you really just kind of walked into that, huh? You can't really have a drop the mic moment in costume without it looking like a parent scolding their child for trick-or-treating past midnight. He's gonna make me put on a shirt and a tie. No. It's a pirate bar. 
If you don't like it, get the f*** out. This is one of the first episodes I've seen where everyone involved is refusing John's help, including the owner that called him in the first place. John brings aboard chef Josh Capon to improve the menu, as well as help Juiciano figure out what he's doing in the kitchen. He watches him make a dish called Burning Bits, which is basically just chicken drenched in habanero sauce. Do it! I'm not eating any more of that. Oh god. Juciano's cooking skills, um, how do I put it? You know how children will sometimes make potions by mixing a bunch of random stuff together and making a big mess? Well, that's basically where he's at, except the potions he makes also seem to give him amnesia. I've never seen anybody actually serve something that they don't taste themselves. Why nope. I have to taste because you taste I see it's good. It's like he immediately forgot that he spat up his own food not but 10 seconds ago. Brilliant. John brings along Elaine Duke to help create some unique cocktails for the menu because their current selection is, uh, lacking to say the least. Oh, and there's more. John wants to focus all his attention on remodeling pirates to attract the 15,000 plus workers in neighboring office buildings to come down for happy hour. But as you can imagine, convincing Tracy is practically impossible due to her insatiable pirate fetish. Ugh, God. So Pirate's Tavern becomes yet another casualty where the soul has been removed because it's not workable. So what, just because I haven't made a salary in six years and nothing about this place has been at all successful, you want to come in here and change things, don't you? Well, yeah! What's next? Do you want us to wash our hands? You're asking me to throw away everything that's in here. Do you want to be a pirate or do you want to send your daughter to college? <sighs> this is like a modern day high school musical. Did you ever think maybe I could be both? Except everyone looks way more tired and the budget's a lot sadder. Tracy finally agrees to let John take control and then rounds up the crew to go over the new changes. We have to push more towards a corporate atmosphere and less towards a pirate atmosphere. Not less. Pirates is dead. Everyone take off the hats or so help me God! I will turn you into oil. I guess we'll have to play pirates somewhere else. Oh my god, they're like legitimately crushed. I think I'll reserve my judgment. See how well you do exactly what you say. Jesus Christ, John, leave the poor man alone. You've already taken everything else away from him. It's so weird because I usually don't hate John when I watch this show. Uh, I usually just fear him. Are you here tomorrow or not? Maybe I'm not. Right, good night. So an employee storms out and quits, while the rest of them decide to stay and see how John can turn things around. The next day, they prepare for the soft opening of the new and improved Pirate's Tavern. They bring aboard a new chef to work alongside Juciano, because he literally has no idea how to cook and is insanely stubborn. His name is Jason, and he looks like he was just blasted in the face by a tired Ray. Homie's rocking that Coraline's dad look real well. Elaine helps the bar create some unique cocktails, while Chef Capon shows them the new simplified menu dishes that even Juciano can't up. Perhaps ants on a log? Maybe a Ritz Cracker snowman. Jesse Barnes is one of the best service trainers in America. They're gonna learn how to serve business clientele rather than play pirate. Remember how I said Mike is always in character? Well, Jesse tries to teach him how to speak like a normal human being and he genuinely can't do it. It's bizarre. You're no longer at a pirate bar, so let's talk like a normal person. You know, I'm, I'm just- Do you want me to do it? Like, I... this is just me. Now that everyone's gotten about seven seconds of training, it's time for John's favorite part of the show, sending a gigantic swarm of people inside all at once before they're prepared in order to piss them off and create drama, while John breathes over everyone's shoulders and says stupid stuff like, Come on, guys, let's hustle. Back in the kitchen, Juciano refuses to pick up the pace and is also way too stubborn to listen to any direction. What time is the kitchen closed? Juciano, pick what up What time is the kitchen closed? Don't ask me what time the kitchen closed. John goes screamo mode on Juciano, who then storms out, leaving Jason to pick up the pieces. And boy, does he seem really amped up about this new responsibility. You want this? You got it. Right. Meanwhile, while all of this is happening, Mike is just absolutely falling apart trying to serve tables. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. With everyone breathing down his neck, he starts getting more and more frustrated, uh, to the point where something kind of insane happens. Are you losing it? I, I am. That's right, Mike almost guts Jesse like a fucking fish. He almost got his mugshot on the fridge, right next to the Robellos. You know, as soon as they took that pirate costume off of him, he had that murderous glint in his eyes. Or eye. Singular. Eventually, the crew starts to pick up the pace and are able to get their orders out more efficiently. Mike quells the demonic voices in his head long enough to avoid killing anyone, and they end up finishing the night strong. As soon as the weary pirate staff is cleared out, John and his crew get to work. John and his team work on remodeling the bar, and nothing can prepare you for what you're about to see. What the f 
is that? I'm scared. Now, this remodel is considered by fans to be John's weakest concept in all of Bar Rescue history. A bar and restaurant themed after, uh, the color gray. I know Tracy agreed to make things a little more corporate, but this is, like, comically corporate. It's completely devoid of any personality. Problem is, will Tracy ever accept anything? That is empowering. I don't know why John thinks that people who work in offices are like fiending to go to a place that reminds them of their job. In fact, I don't even think the theme was the main issue here. It was probably just the cheap decor and the horrible menu. Either John did this on purpose to like drum up a reaction, or he actually just made a really embarrassing misfire. Don't get me wrong, the interior looks miles better than it used to. You know, the bar is super sleek, the patio got a massive upgrade that it desperately needed. They even introduced a self-service tap so customers can serve their own beer. Pirate's Tavern was obviously a hole, right? But you know, the branding doesn't need to be literally sucked of all color in order to attract new customers. Either way, the reopening is off to a good start, and people seem to actually be on top of things. Even Mike, of all people, is in a much better mood. When the food and the bar and the servers all work together, we all make money. I will intermingle that with my inner pirate. Are we just gonna gloss over the fact that he straight up tried to murder someone earlier? Or did people forget that? Why, why, why are we not bringing that up? These changes are not what... I'd wanted. This whole episode is kind of depressing because you have this group of people that are all really passionate about this zany bar. Then this big guy in a suit and tie barges in, yells at everyone about how stupid it is, and then steamrolls the owner into becoming like the polar opposite of the thing they loved. We're really enjoying the new place. Thanks for having That's us. That's really not what I want to hear. The episode ends with Tracy telling John that she's disappointed, and John's like, well, my work here is done. I'm gonna sleep on it for a couple of days. Whether it becomes a pirate bar, again, I can do anything I want. So weeks after John left, Tracy shuts the place down and almost immediately reopens it as Pirate's Tavern once again. Not even joking. The corporate bar and grill was obviously not going to work. We changed it back, but a more mature version of it. They completely reversed everything John had done and then just upgraded the original pirate decor, which doesn't even look that bad, honestly. I think Johnny Teffert's really f stupid. We take it off the sign and burn and drink. The best thing I... I do it in my life. That's real, by the way. The employees of Pirate's Tavern uploaded a strange music video to YouTube where they shot up John's sign and lit it on fire over a very badly produced pirate shanty. I've come up against people who challenge my ideas, but Pirate's Tavern is the only one who outright threw him in the trash. So yeah, Bar Rescue continues to be my gateway into trashy reality TV. I love it, and I know it's stupid because a majority of it is probably scripted, but hey, it's entertaining. If there's a lesson to be learned from this episode, it's that no no one can make you change, even if it's what's best for you, you know? If, if you want to live in your parents' basement and play pirate until late-stage dementia kicks in, more power to you. If I was more successful, this is the part of the video where I'd plug my merch, but instead I'm just gonna plug, uh, John Tapper's scary face. Alright, come on, go, get out of here, take a hike, you, go, you scamp.